Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor for me to be here at Tokyo International Forum to address highly educated and smart people like you who have extensive knowledge about Guelan. Here is one, uh, one group of investigators who have anonymously worked on Guelan's role in heart. Others have seen it above heart, and I would be the one who will be seeing it below heart, meaning thereby its role in gastrointestinal tract. I am Dr. Talat Vaseen. I have been formerly a postdoc fellow at Harvard Medical School and currently I am a final year resident in general surgery at Services Institute of Medical Sciences, Lahore, Pakistan. Before moving ahead, first I would like to introduce to you my mentor, Malcolm Robinson, who is bariatric surgeon at Harvard Medical School, and Dr. Stan Ashley, who has been financially supporting this huge amount of work. Mark Duxbury has also been involved in the details of experimentation. Over the years, our lab has primarily focused on treatment modalities for short gut syndrome. In fact, Dr. Douglas Wilmer invented TPN here in the same lab. Short gut syndrome has remained an active problem despite enormous work on it. I would suggest Alan Langness books for you people if you need extra introductory information. Mainly, work has been previously done on four lines. First are the intestinal lengthening procedures, which have proven to be technically demanding and at times fatal for the patients owing to inherent surgical risks. Transplantation has been hindered by acute rejection and intestinal tissue engineering is still in nascency. Our lab has previously focused on peptides like growth hormone, GLP-2 for intestinal adaptation and short gut syndrome. In fact, recently FDA has approved growth hormone glutamine combination for short gut syndrome patients as it makes a subset of patients TPN free. There is intricate balance between intestinal epithelial proliferation and apoptosis which governs the whole phenomena during physiological and pathological scenarios and this whole process is called intestinal adaptation. Both luminal and humoral factors control the process. We are more interested in humoral factors, which could be even better than growth, growth hormone glutamine combination and GLP-2, which have been previously tried with minimal success. After discovery of ghrelin and seeing that ghrelin has myogenic properties, we thought ghrelin might be peptide that we are looking for. There is a first, there is a first literature evidence that supports that ghrelin has potent mitogenic properties. These mitogenic properties range up to 50 percent, uh, range up to 50 percent increase in proliferation in various cell subsets. There is also ample information, uh, uh, literature evidence, which shows that ghrelin stimulates the proliferation of various cell lines uh, printed here in this slide. Similarly, when subjected to various sub, uh, types of stress, it prevents the apoptosis in various cell, sub, cell types. It prevents the ethanol and acetic acid induced also formation in stomach and has been shown to be beneficial in various models of gut inflammation and mucosal barrier dysfunction. As most of ghrelin is produced from gastrointestinal tract, we thought it might be the inherent modulator of intestinal mucosal compartment. Before going to into the depth of my in vivo data, I would describe few aspects of in vitro data which would help you people understand some critical questions raised in this meeting and would supplement my in vivo data. Uh, these are three papers that I would like to discuss in, uh, in sections. The upper two paper I would be presenting in detail in the poster session and the third one I would I have already published as a poster in uh, Journal of American College of Surgeons and has been and I have presented in 
annual meeting of American College of Surgeons. This data on the in vitro system of CACU2 and FHS74 ain't intestinal epithelials, which shows that ghrelin and its known receptor subtypes are expressed within cell lines. Immunochemistry also clarifies the ghrelin and receptors are not only localized along the membranes but also in cytosol, suggesting that their internalization after binding. The slide perhaps very well clarifies the question raised by Dr. Nakao. The slide is very interesting. Ghrelin not only stimulates the proliferation of cells, but decicyl ghrelin also does the same, uh, which has been previously dubbed as an inactive form of the ghrelin. The response rate is about around 20-30% over the controls and uh, it is almost comparable to GLP-2. We also confirmed the mitogenic effects of ghrelin by cell cycle analysis by flow cytometry. Ghrelin shifts about 6 to 10 percent of the cells from G1 phase to S1 phase, which is pretty much encouraging. We further confirmed the validity of our findings by antagonizing the effects of ghrelin by receptor subtypes, non-specific contactness, D lies 3 GHRP6. This does not blunt the ghrelin's effect. To, to know which receptor subtype is, subtype is mediating these effects, we silenced growth hormone secreting of receptor 1A with RNAi, and we were surprised that ghrelin's proliferative effect remained active despite inactivation of 1A receptors. We already know by Dr. Smith's work that growth hormone secreting of receptor 1B is not active form of the receptor. I hope that this answers the Dr. Smith's question that ghrelin is mediating these effects through a third party. Here on this forum, I propose existence of a third type of growth hormone secreted over receptor, which is cell to which is still to be sequenced. Another important question that has been repeatedly stressed by Dr. Kangawa is the involvement of growth hormone IGF-1 axis in ghrelin mediated activities. I believe that it is the direct effect in this in vitro system and growth hormone IGF-1 independent since we did not see any significant growth hormone or IGH level raised in supernatants of the CACU2 cells. I would further clarify this issue in the talk ahead. Here is the signaling paradigm. Due to time constraint, I would just go through it. Ghrelin transactivates EGFR to harness ERK1 and 2 and AKT system also does the, this independently. Second set of in vitro information comes from the role of ghrelin during inflammatory stress. I have, got, I have got this data from JX paper. Ghrelin inhibits the anti-proliferative activity of TNF alpha in various intestinal systems, which is antagonizable with d 3 ghrp 6 It also inhibits the pro-apoptotic effects of TNF alpha and cyclohexamide. This response is dramatic and ranges up to 70%. This means that ghrelin would be more effective in conditions involving apoptosis than proliferation. The reversal of TN alpha effect on proliferation is mediated by the same pathway as has been discussed previously. On the other hand, prevention of apoptosis involves the stabilization of mitochondrial membrane and inactivation of caspase 3 presumably through AKT pathway. We also employed Podolsky's uh, restitution assay to see the effects of ghrelin on intestinal epithelial cells. Ghrelin has significant effect as could be judged by the diagram. These effects are also antagonizable with ghrelin antagonists. 